I should have water. Seems like every year there's rumors, oh, this could be it for Nick Saban, but you guys had a big commitment yesterday, and you guys are still in the college football playoff. It seems like every other year, every year. Do you find that comical, just the kind of other teams kind of trying to say, this is it, and that goes against me, but he's still got it going, rolling good? I mean, you know, when when you're a coach as dominant as Nick Saban, you know, uh, people don't really want to see you win no more. So, you know, people just start saying stuff like that, you know, that he might be over with and stuff, you know, but... I don't think he's going nowhere anytime soon. So. Have you seen it just the same since you started? That was Malcolm I was saying. He's the same guy every day. No? Yeah, he's the same guy every day. Comes into practice, you know, snaps on people, you know, get, get, gets on people about anything. But, you know, he, he loves us. You know, he shows a lot of love. You know, he, he wants the best for everybody. No Limit, so people call you. Yeah. Where does that name come from? Uh, honestly, uh, I grew up in, like, and I really started calling myself that in middle school for real. But, you know, I was a big G Herbo fan, a rapper. And, you know, uh, his little thing is No Limit too. And so, you know, I was like, I started paying attention to it and stuff. Like, just like the name No Limit, like, no limitations at all. Like, knowing there's no limit to what you could do. So, you know, I just I started calling myself that, you know, just to let myself know every day that there's no limit at all. So. You mentioned that coach, you know, snaps on people sometimes. Is that almost a sign of respect that he trusts you guys to get on you like that? Yeah, you know, uh, we like we we're like we we're all like his kids, you know. So he wants to, he wants the best for everybody. So you know, when he sees somebody not doing what they're capable of doing, you know, he he's going to get it out of you. So yeah. Do you have any uh, legendary ones that happened to you when you were the subject of that? Uh oh yeah, it was actually recent. Like during, yeah, it was actually this season. So, but like, uh, you know, my freshman and sophomore year, like, he didn't really, he didn't really get on me because, like, you know, I always try to make sure I did what I do, you know, give it my all every day in practice. But, you know, it was a uh, one time during fall camp, it was a, uh, I was rushing up the field, but I was supposed to take the back coming out if he would have peeled out, and I didn't. But this is during a walkthrough. Like, it's, it's not, it's not no live period, no, this is before practice even starts. And then, so, um, after that, who has the back? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then, I, of course, I messed up. And then uh, after that, we had um, flex. And flex is like a little warm-up where you go back and forth between sideline and sideline. And he, he comes to my line and just stands there on my line. Every single time I, I ran past him, he, he would say some slick stuff, like, like about the same play I messed up on. Like, it was, just, it was, it was crazy. All I could do was laugh, though, you know, just soak it all in. So I take it you haven't made that same mistake? Nope. Yet. Nope. Haven't made that same mistake yet. Nope. Same time, right? He can be harsh to you, maybe not harsh to you guys, hard on you guys. Yeah. Uh, and, and get that out of you, but he's also able to relate to you guys. Yeah. How exactly does he balance both of those in the your, your point of view? I mean, you know, uh, Coach Saban, he's been coaching for a very long time, so you know, he understands how his players feel at a certain time and stuff like that. But at the same time, he knows what it takes to, to be a champion. So, you know, uh, it's just all about us as players, you know, trusting in what he's saying and, you know, just going by how he runs things and stuff like that because he's been there, done that before we've even been in college. So, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a trust that you got to build with him. Malachi was saying that uh, this year Coach's maybe not lenient but a little bit more uh, – I see what you said. I'm already knowing what you're saying. Yeah. Is that something that you noticed? I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it is, but I feel like him being a little more flexible and understanding, you know, it's just, it's, the relationship between him and his players is unbreakable. So that that's one thing I would say, well, between the whole him being a little a little more cooler or something like that, you know. But I feel like that's his that's his Bill's relationship between him and his players. So. Yeah. Do you have an example of how he's been a little bit more chill this year? Uh, compared to my freshman year, him and now, he's joking with a lot more people. Well, he's joking with guys a lot more on the defense. I'll say that. Yeah, you know. Uh, you always, you always have a good little laugh when you with him. So, you know, it's, yeah, so it's always a good time. Dallas, uh, this defense for next year is adding uh, LT Overton and Damani Jackson both committed. I mean, what do you know about their games, or what is this defense getting those two? Uh, I, wa I, wa I watched LT a lot when he was at Tesla and them. You know, that was a, that was a team that uh, I watched a lot of their film, you know, with them having a lot of sacks in the SEC and stuff like that. So, you know, 
I don't, like I know what he could bring to the table, and I and I also remember uh, Damani from high school. So you know, I know what he's about for sure. Oh, you know, he brings a lot of pass rush, very physical, very a big body as well. You know, uh, and I feel like he could he could he could he could play to the standard that we play here at the University of Alabama. So. How's it been this year uh, with Will gone now? You're kind of the, the premier pass rusher on the team. You're always well regarded, but now it's your pass rush, you uh, and 41. What what is, what has that been like this transition? I mean, like, you know, Will, right? Uh, with him on the field, you know, he's gonna get his regardless. So. <laughs> You know, it was, it was uh, but he, but I feel like Will uh, so what the standard of being an outside linebacker at, at the University of Alabama really is. So you know, I feel like he just he just paved the way for a lot of people. You know, in the, in the outside back room, you know, guys like me, Chris Braswell, Quan Darius, Robinson, Keanu Coop, and all the young guys we have in the room as well. But you know, uh, he kind of just set a standard for us. So you know, I feel like without a Will, it, we probably wouldn't be playing how we play now. So you know, I feel like. He, he, he plays a very big role still in, in today's season, you know, just by how he carried himself last season. What are some of the nuances to playing an offense that uses the tight ends as much as Michigan does? I mean, you know, playing in the SEC, uh, you would see uh, some tight end play, but, you know, uh, playing against Michigan, who, who sometimes have three tight ends on the on, on the field at the same time, you know, it's kind of – it's different in a way. But, you know, it's just all about how we prepare the team, you know, how we adjust to the team as well. You know, we had a lot of time since the last time we played to really study those guys, and, you know, understand how, how they how they run the ball and how they use their tight ends as well. So, yeah. What exact adjustments do you have to, to make for that? I mean, uh, you know, uh, having different personnel, like, like, you know, sometimes we might not uh, run with six DBs. And, I mean, uh, yeah, five DBs and four down linemen and two linebackers, you know, we're going to have to have – a lot of more big bodies on the field, you know, to be more physical, you know, just to, uh, you know, yeah, stop the running stuff, so. Dallas, we were talking to Kevin Steele, and he's, he's been through so many battles running defenses. How, how invaluable is it to have a resource like him every single day coaching you guys? Up? Yeah, you know, having a resource like Kevin Steele, you know, in the um, in the defensive room, you know, it, he, he's been around for a long time, you know. He's coached a lot of great defenses. And, you know, it's just, uh, just a blessing to have a, a guy like that with a lot of wisdom in your room. You know, he can tell you when things are wrong, tell you what he sees, you know, tell tell you his point of view of things and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just, it's just always good to have a guy like that so you can pick his brain and understand how he thinks. And Lawson was telling us earlier how, I mean, he gets after you guys to light a fighter. Uh, hold on, hold on, repeat that, repeat that. Uh, Lawson was saying earlier, Deontay Lawson was saying that he knows how to motivate you guys. Um, what's it like in the locker room when, when he's really getting you going? Let me, let me reverse that. When, I, when I'm getting him going, <laughs> when I'm getting him going. But, you know, now, uh, you know, D-Law, that's my guy. You know, it's been my day one dude, you know, since my freshman year. You know, my, my roommate in the dorms, of course. But, you know, just having a guy like that, you know, the chemistry that we have on the defense, you know, is I feel like it's unmatched. You know, because a lot of the guys on the defense, you know, we've been friends since two years ago, since we lost in the National Championship my freshman year. So, you know, it's just uh, – it's just good to have your brothers on the field, you know, just knowing that you have brothers on the field that you can trust and play with, and you know, that's, that's, that's going to have your back through thick and thin, so. Michigan's without uh, All-American guard Zach Zinner. They've moved Barnhart over and put Trent A. Jones in that tackle spot. Yeah. Have you guys seen a lot from those two? Obviously, Barnhart played a lot of tackle this year, but just moved over, and mm -hmm. then Trent A. Jones has been around for a while, but is really just getting his first chance. To yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, – they kind of filled in that role of Zach Zinner being hurt. But, you know, I feel like overall it's, it's dollars on that old line for sure. Like, you know, there's a lot of older, experienced guys that understand and understand football and understand run schemes and how to pass it and all type of stuff. But, you know, I feel like they never really missed a beat with Zach Zinner being gone. So, you know, I feel like that's going to be a big challenge on Monday, you know, when we play against those guys. Do you still talk to Will Anderson? Oh, yeah. What's your yeah. relationship like since he's left Alabama? I mean, yeah, you know, we still uh, we still talk on the phone to this day. Which, you know, uh, I just look at him as a big brother, you know, a role model that I can always ask questions to and, you know, just see how it was for him when he was in, in the shoes I'm in now. So, you know, and just seeing, like, how he led the team, you know, and just checking up on him, you know, just seeing how he's doing. You know, everybody needs to, you know, needs a friend that you can call up on, you know, check up on, see how their men are doing. You know, it's his first year in the NFL and stuff like that. So, you know, that, that could possibly be a challenge for him. So, you know, but, yeah, you know, I, I've always kept in contact with Will. When it comes to you guys just played the number one team in the country with Georgia. Yeah. Now Michigan's the number one team in the country. 
Does it feel the same playing? Obviously, Georgia was on a huge winning streak, and Michigan's the new number one team. Just do you guys feel like you're still playing the number one team in the country? I mean, honestly, like that ranking stuff doesn't mean nothing. I'm, I'm gonna just be real with you, like. We don't care if you rank number one, number 25, number 1,000. We we going to play the same football we've been playing since, you know, it, it don't really matter. I feel like who we play, what you rank. At the end of the day, we still got to put on shoulder pads and helmets, you know, and play ball. So, you know, I feel like that's how we approach things. Dallas, Coach Saban's known to always be dressed real sharply. Yeah. If you were a coach, what would your game day fit be? If I was coach, what would my game day fit be? Me being me. I'll say a, a a mink jacket, a mink coat, like a like one of like the big mink coats, like you know, one of them. Just a regular button down white shirt, you know. Probably might throw on like a little fedora or something like that, you know, tilt it to the side. That's just me though, you know. It's some it's some some khaki pants and you know uh, some loafers. <laughs> Yeah. He can run, he can throw, anything you guys are really trying to, to avoid letting him do? Uh, you know, just letting him run out the pocket because I feel like that's where he makes a lot, of, a lot of plays. But, you know, he's a playmaker in general, though. You know, I feel like he's a, he's a field general. He leads that offense very well. You know, you can just tell that, like, they're very sharp and precise on what they do on offense, you know. But uh, I feel like overall he's a good quarterback. It's going to be a challenge to play him on Monday. Alex Orgy, backup quarterback for Michigan, he comes in and some some Wildcat type yeah. packages. Anything you guys see on film from him? Yeah, he's an athlete for sure. He's a very freak athlete. Uh, but you know, it's just uh, we gonna, we gonna have to contain him when he's when he's back there at Wildcat and stuff like that. You know, just have to be prepared for whatever we're facing. But the comparisons between Orgy and Milrow, anything that you see on tape that those two do alike? I mean, well, you know, they they both athletes for sure. But you know, that's at the end of the day, that's that's Alex Orgy and that's Dylan Milrow. So you know, I can't really, really compare and contrast. You know. And, Ain't really, you know, so, yeah. You played for George Smith at Aquinas, right? Yeah. Legendary. Legend. High school coach. Legend. What are your thoughts about, you know, the stretch of seven years? Yeah. High school through now, working with two legendary coaches. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, I feel like I always wanted to be coached by a, a great coach that knows what they're doing, that's been around for a very long time. So, you know, I feel like, when I transferred to St. Thomas, I, I trusted Coach Smith and Coach Harry and what they built at that school. So you know, I feel like that was the best fit for me. And I kind of took those same type of ways how I went about things about coming to the University of Alabama being coached by Nick Saban. So, you know, I feel like it, it, it kind of it correlates in a way, you know, just being coached by two greats. You think you got to Alabama more prepared for playing at Alabama because of what you learned from Coach Smith? I mean, honestly, college is a whole new beast. So I feel like no matter what you prepare for in high school, you are going against grown men now. Like you're going against grown guys that been there for three, four years, that know what they're doing, and you know, just being a freshman coming in, you know, it's just something that you just gotta adjust to, honestly. But I feel like everybody adjusts in their own way and adjusts differently, though. But I feel like Coach Smith did and Coach Harry did prepare me in a way, you know, with uh, things like we did. Like we, like we used to practice at six o'clock in the morning sometimes, you know. We don't we don't practice at six o'clock here, but we lift at six thirty, so you know. And just you know, just instilling the the foundation in us as a as, as a high school football team. So you know, it, it's kind of the same kind of the same rules and beliefs here. So you said it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. So you're, you're a freshman year at Alabama. You come in first practice. Who was the offensive tackle that gave you your welcome to college? Moment? Oh man. <laughs> so it was, I really feel like I didn't experience my welcome to college moment to my first practice with the ones. So uh, in high school, I mean, in fall camp, I was with the threes a lot because, you know, uh, it wasn't really no injuries. And then when guys went down like Chris Allen and Drew Sanders, like it was my turn to step up and I was with the threes. So, you know, uh, I really feel like the dude, like the, my first day of practice with the ones and I went against Emil Echior and Evan Neal. That was my welcome to college moment. It was like the first snapping team or something like that. Like Evan Neal probably drove me back. Like he drove me out the screen on the field. <laughs> So it's not like, like he didn't even drop me back. Like I was really out the screen, and like I was like, I couldn't even be mad at it. We but don't yeah, but you know, uh, I I don't regret none of that because he got me better. You know, he got me prepared. So you know, going against the guys like that in practice yeah. made the games even easier. So you know, it's just uh, it's just a blessing. But you know, everybody get dogged out though they freshman year. So. Is that what makes a program like Alabama so special? You think where there's that like that depth and experience all across? Yeah. The you know, uh, the guys who go against the practice every day, you know, they, 
some it, it, some of the best in the country, in my opinion. But you know, uh, like for example, like you know, me and Chris Bradley, we go up against J.C. Latham every day, and you know, J.C. Latham, he, in my opinion, he's the best tackle in college football right now. But uh, you know, just going against guys like that in practice is always competition, and you always learn to get better every day. So that's one thing I would say. That was you expect excellence out of yourself, and then yeah. you see that in how you play. But what does Coach Saban demand out of you on a daily basis? He really demands me to be a leader, you know, because I've been playing since I was a freshman and stuff like that. So you know, I guess he understands that like I've been there and was mature enough as a, as a young dude, you know, to handle my business. So I, I guess he wants me to instill that into the younger guys that we have on the defense and stuff like that, and just, and just the team in general. So you know. Uh, he just listens to me to be a leader, you know, make sure that things are being ran right in practice and, you know, in the locker room as well and off the field, so. Dallas, Michigan is a team that likes to trick players <laughs> some sort of fake almost every game. How do you as a linebacker prepare for that and not fight on it? Oh, uh, you know, just looking at tendencies, you know, uh, with, uh, with trick plays and stuff like that, you have to pay attention to everything, you know. Uh, but I feel like just a lot of film preparation, you know, just uh, being on your P's and Q's on the field, you know, it's just it's important in stopping trick plays. I feel like you can't really predict when a trick play is going to happen, but like something's going to be off for sure. But uh, you just got to read and react to it. You know, that's, that's all football is, especially on defense. Read and react. What's the best trick play you've gone up against in, in practice or in a game? I ain't gonna lie, I got to get my hats off to Arkansas when we played in my freshman year, I believe. We played Arkansas my freshman year. Uh, they got hit us with a fake field goal and scored, and then kicked the field goal out there, like a real field goal after. So you know, I feel like that was it. Really caught everybody out guard for real. Yeah, that for sure. Now, Chad says that one of the big things you're going to steal this year is the kind of re-implementing the band standard. Yeah. How is that something you kind of saw with him working under Coach Steele this year? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, uh, seeing Coach Steele when he first came in, he always talked about how he coached here at the University of Alabama. You know, he coached a lot of a lot of a lot of good guys as well. You know, he tried to early he tried to instill what it was back then when he was here into us now. So, you know, I feel like he's done a very good job at that, you know, just letting us know like how things are supposed to be ran out here at the University of Alabama, how we're supposed to practice and playing the games and just preparing in general. So and the attitude we're supposed to have as a defense. So I feel like having coach him having coach still in the room has been a very good uh been an advantage. Yes, sir. Nah, I haven't got a chance to do it yet, but I'm a, I'm a, I definitely got to pick a day where I could, you know, go shopping and stuff like that and do, enjoy myself. You know, I kind of prepare for it when I pack my clothes, so, you know, yeah. Yeah, I left a little room with my suitcase, you know, to bring some clothes and stuff, so. I feel like the personality between this team and, and the past two teams I was on is the is the chemistry that we have as a whole team. You know, uh, the past few years I feel like you know you go like it's it's a team, but you know they have like little groups and cliques that you know that we have. You know, I feel like this year is a difference because everybody's together as a team. You know, just uh, you have a lot of team events. You know, team. You know, people people might come over to people's houses and stuff like that just to eat. And so, you know, I feel like the chemistry and the bond and the, com and the camaraderie we have as a team is very good compared to the last two years. So that, was, that wasn't maybe as much of the case the last two years? Nah. nah. How, did that, how did that change then? Uh, it changed when over this summer, you know, uh, we had guys like, you know, Chap, uh, Haha, and, um, you know, Denzel really emphasized about how important it is to do stuff as a team, you know, just to be each other's brother, you know, uh, you like to say be sci fi. You know, so I feel like that's something that we uh, take serious every day. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for the Alabama media available. Sure, yes, sir. Oh, shit. Sure.